Hi everyone. Wanted to do a quick video uh, explaining the registration, um, the uh, the scheduling card that you got at registration yesterday, or possibly today or tomorrow. Uh, there's been some um, confusion and some concerns, so I just wanted to go over it quickly with you uh, in a short video. So if you can um, make your uh, draw your attention here to the um, salmon colored schedule card, there are two sides to the card. There is a sample side with a sample schedule and your actual schedule on the other side. So there's two sides. Um, that's caused some confusion. The sample side is the side that has all of the extra instructions and explanations and the key here on the side. Your side is just a schedule, okay? So um, no names, everything else here just for informational purposes. The other side has your schedule. Now, this is not a typical schedule that you would see in a typical year with a seven period day. This is a block schedule. And so because of that, this looks a little different. So I want to try to give you a little bit of a, a tutorial on how to read this, how to read this. So there are four nine week blocks within the um, school year. So there's first semester, uh, first nine weeks, second nine weeks, third nine weeks, fourth nine weeks. Okay, so these are the different um, nine weeks that make up the school year in a block schedule. First nine weeks is a semester. So we're not, that's, we're not used to that. We're used to a semester being 18 weeks, half of a school year, but in a block schedule, it's nine weeks. So this is the first nine weeks. This is the second nine weeks. And here you can see that psychology one, second period, is backed up with psychology two, second period, in the second nine weeks. So in that second semester, okay, so two semester classes backed up together, nine weeks apiece. Then that repeats for the second term. We're calling it fall term and we're calling it spring term. So we have two terms and there are semesters within those terms. It repeats, like I said, third nine weeks, fourth nine weeks, third semester, fourth semester um, here in the um, spring term, okay, or first and second semester of the spring term. Year-long classes are both nine weeks, so English four uh, uh, on fourth period and English four fourth period here. That is your year-long class in an 18-week block on block schedule. Fourth period in the second term or spring term is a different class. Uh, I'm sorry, different class here because it's not the English isn't a, isn't doesn't run the entire year. It only runs the 18 weeks. Okay, so it does. You need to, to look at each one of those to see what your schedule is. Now, you know mods are periods. So period one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, except you'll see here that there's a five. And there's been some questions about five. Five is homeroom. Um, it doesn't matter here what it says uh, of the title or the teacher name. It is the homeroom class. Now, you are assigned to this teacher, but it's not for a class period or an instructional time. It's for homeroom. And that's going to be our opportunity to get out school-wide information and do school-wide activities um, in that period. So it is not an instructional time. It's not a grade. This teacher is only there as the person who's facilitating that homeroom. Okay. It does. It is offered in the second term, spring term, but uh, it doesn't print. So it's only printing here right now for the first term or the fall semester or uh, fall term. It's not printing here for the spring term. It will. It just hasn't yet. So that's your schedule in a nutshell. Um, it's it's uh, a little different than what you're uh, used to seeing, and so I wanted to make sure that you understood what was here. Um, schedule changes. I am sure that you have some questions and concerns about your schedule, and so we are giving you an uh, opportunity to let us know what those are. Uh, down here at the bottom of this form, you'll see a URL to a Google form. The same link is located on the front page of our website. You can go to that as well. If you click on this, it'll pull up a Google form. That Google form asks for a little bit of information and asks if you are struggling with one of these four things with your schedule. The four priority things, not having four classes each of the nine weeks. So you got to have four each of the nine weeks. That's what you're supposed to have. You need to have a math, English, science, and social studies or a history class here. So you need to make sure that you have that on your schedule. You need to make sure that if you have a missing CTE sequence like um, digital design one or two, or if you're in um, uh, fashion design and you're missing that class, I need to know that. 
And if you are an uh, IBDP student and you have an SL or HL that's missing, I would need to know that as well. So make sure that you let me know those things. Um, also, if you are looking to do some sort of blended option that isn't e-learning, so FLVS or BVS, and you would like to replace a class on your schedule with an FLVS or BVS class, um, I would need you to let me know those things. Those four things are the priority things that we're working on to make sure that your schedule is correct. In a block schedule, the schedule is a little harder to make. I only offer classes um, in those four blocks, and I only offer them once a semester, uh, maybe twice a semester. I don't offer many classes multiple times. Um, the core classes I do, but the electives and some of those classes that you might be looking for might only be offered once. Because of that, making the schedule fit everyone's needs is very difficult. So it's very possible that the thing that you need, I'm not able to offer you. That's one reason why having the BVS, FLVS option is very valuable right now, because you can use that to supplement some of the things that we might not be able to offer you here on campus. You can get the best of what we offer on campus and then supplement it with what you can in another digital format. So that's really the benefit there. Um, we are working tirelessly to get through uh, your emails and your phone calls. And really, truly, the only way that we can give good attention to the schedule change requests is through this link. It auto-populates to a file on the counselor's desks, and they are working through that list as we speak. They will um, reach out to you with questions, and they will reach out to you to let you know what our outcomes were. If we have questions because something isn't offered and we need to go down a different route, we will let you know that. All right, so um, please, any questions or comments that you have about your schedule, please direct them to that Google form. That is our only way that we're accepting um, ch uh, schedule change requests. That's the only way we can get all of the information in one location. Phone calls and emails and stop bys, it's just too much and we're just not able to do it. Um, there are only three school counselors that work on schedules and there are a thousand students at the school and so we are working very hard to work through all of your concerns but there are more concerns than counselors to go through them. Uh, we have only had six days now with this new block schedule since we were told to, to switch over to block. We had to build the block schedule and then get the schedules in the counselors hands. They've only had a week with that and so we are working very hard to make the schedule work for as many people, for everyone, um, but as many people as we possibly can. So please bear with us as we go through this process and get you um, and get back to you as soon as we can. Okay. So here is the uh, information that you need for schedule change requests. Here is uh, the new schedule card that you should see uh, when you come through registration. And uh, hopefully I gave you uh, some good information there on how to read that. Um, thank you. I hope this has been informative. Have a great Cocoa Beach Day.